Hey everybody, welcome back to the At Dad Can Learn YouTube channel. I'm Dad, and uh, there's no NJ, um, simply because of the subject matter of what we're talking about and, and the straightforwardness with which I plan to address it. You know, I've, I've created an online presence with my eight-year-old son that inherently carries a, a, some sort of risk, um, and it puts a tremendous burden on my shoulders. And so before launching, he and I had a sit down and we, we had a very mature conversation about um, some of the things that are out there, the evil in the world. Uh, it was it was fruitful, and and I think we're we're going about things the right way. Here in the future, we'll do an episode um, of our normal show that will um, incorporate how I've discussed that with him, the things that he understands, um, so you can so parents you can uh, address it with your kids the way that you see fit. It's before December seventh of 2019 go to our kickstarter page check us out if you feel like funding us and and trying to get something helping us get something better than this green blanket hanging from the ceiling from other things that uh we would like to fund in order to make this a, a more legitimate um, studio type experience so that we can produce better videos for you we also have a Twitter page, we've got a Facebook, those are both at Dad Can Learn, and you can have all of that information, instead of writing it down just then, you can just go to www.dadcanlearn.com to check us out. I do apologize in advance if I end up looking this way, that's where my notes are. I'm also going to get these notes and put them on our website uh, in the, the resources tab. Uh, it should be there for free. The idea behind you having my notes and, and essentially my rundown of what I'm going to talk about is so that you can have this discussion with your kids at a different point in time. So I keep saying with your kids, I am talking to parents. So kids, if you're watching this, I need you to pause the video. I need you to share it with whoever your, your parent figure is, whether it's your, your biological parent, an adoptive parent, a foster parent, stepmom, stepdad, big brother, it doesn't matter to me. Whoever acts as your parent is the one that's gonna need to have this discussion with you first before you hear it from this guy on online. Parents, when you get a hold of it, um, watch it, determine if this video will be beneficial for your kids. You're the one that's gonna know your kids better than I will. So if you think that this is appropriate for them, if this makes your life easier when discussing this topic, then, then show them the video. There's not gonna be anything obscene or any bad words or anything like that in it. Um, it's just, it may be words that you haven't used with them before, something you, you may be uncomfortable with. Um, it's a lot easier for me to talk to a, a video camera um, than, it, than it is a lot of times for us to talk to our kids. But remember, we are trying to form the at Dad Can Learn community. Just because I call it Dad Can Learn doesn't mean it's directed towards dads. Remember that. For these purposes, my name is Dad. It's for all parents. And that's what's important about this video. If your kids can get online, then they're old enough to need this information that we're going to talk about. We're, uh, from time to time, I'm going to insert little pause videos. But the idea behind that is that it'll break this up into little, into little pieces for you. Um, so that you can, if you are watching this with your kid, you can turn to them at those moments. You can talk to them about what we just discussed. It's up to you how you want this video to work for you. All right, so welcome back. Here we go. Child predators suck. There's really no other way to say it. You know, it doesn't matter if they're online or in real life. They're the scourge of the earth. Um, you know, I don't care if they're men or if they're women. I don't care if they're rich people, if they're poor, if they're somewhere in the middle. I don't care if they're clergy members or if they're lay people. I don't care if it's a, a family member or a stranger. I don't care if they're young or old. I don't, I don't care what race or nationality they are. I don't care if it's somebody that sits in their mom's basement and, and just trolls little kids all day while they're eating chips and drinking Mountain Dew, or if it's somebody in a high public office that uh, you know eats porterhouses every day for lunch and dinner and only drinks the like the finest the finest single malt scotch there is. You know, it doesn't matter. They suck. The, the the people that get their kicks by emotionally and physically and sexually abusing children or really any at-risk 
population, but for these purposes, we're talking about children. It's the worst of the worst. Um, it's it's they are the reason that our kids can't go out and play outside all day with their friends unsupervised and then come back at nighttime. They're the reason that our that we as parents have to have these conversations with our kids long before they they discover an interest in having a boyfriend or a girlfriend in most cases. Our kids don't understand and this I say kids like I refer to my kid a lot, and he's only eight, but this refers to kids in high school and, you know, approaching their teenage years or or already in and almost past their teenage years. Oftentimes, we have to have these conversations before our kids have any idea about the feelings involved with sexuality, and we, we have to explain to them the concept of, of criminally sexual deviance. We have to teach them grooming behaviors and and what they're supposed to do if they ever feel uncomfortable. And just so we're clear, blocking a, a person who appears to be grooming is not enough. The only thing you're doing there is making the next target vulnerable. So at a time where, where you know kids should be absorbing everything that is awesome about God's creation, we have to tell them, hold on, you gotta make sure your guard's up. And that's not fair to them. So I'm not a child psychologist, I'm not a behavioral therapist, I'm not a criminologist, I'm not a researcher, I'm not a social worker or any other form of expert. I'm just a dad who loves his kid. And, and I wanna raise my son so that he can thrive when it's time for, for him to leave our nest. Um, you know, I don't want him to be scared when he hits the real world, I want him to be prepared. And, but, but I also want him to know that I love him, that I'm here. You know, it's it, that's that's the whole that was the genesis of, of doing YouTube videos with my son was so that we could spend more time together. And it has em- evolved into what I hope can be this awesome community, raise him in the best way possible. I try to get information from everywhere. I, I read journal articles. I read newspaper articles. I read magazine articles or blog posts and you know, just the myriad other resources that are out there. And we rely on our church a lot and, and the teachings of our faith. But my wife and I, between what we've learned and what we've discussed and we have these open conversations, we've developed and formulated what what we believe is the best way to raise our son. Um, What works for us may not work for you, but there are certain certain key elements that will work regardless of who your kid is or, or who you are as a parent. So we know that predators exist, right? So what do we do about it? So there's a couple different options. The first of which we can remove all sources of potential invasion from the house. Get rid of internet access, get rid of YouTube. Don't do that. Um, get rid of you know online gaming. You, you can get all that stuff out of the house. You can just wrap your babies in this, in this great bubble of protection. Um, keep them from experiencing the, the, the real world as it is. I, I do a YouTube channel with my eight-year-old, so I think uh, I think that kind of I think that kind of answers for for where I stand on preventing the contact from the outside world. I don't think that someone who's shielded and protected from the real world, when it's time for them to leave the nest, I, they're not prepared. How can they be successful if they don't know what they're walking into? You know, a professional baseball player, it's not their first time to. Uh, to walk up to the plate and swing a bat. They've practiced their entire life. They get that experience of facing a fastball, facing a curveball that they think is coming for their head at first, and then it drops down, and they know to swing or, or to lay off. Whatever. It's that practice that they have. It's, it's the same thing with raising a kid into an adult. They've got to know what's out there. So we also have the opportunity to rely on published research, published evidence. There was a research paper done or, or, but by the University of New Hampshire that claims that like only 9% of uh, all children have ever experienced some sort of solicitation of, or sexual solicitation online. And only 4% were ever 
approach to to make contact offline. Um, so nine percent, four percent, my kids are safe, right? I mean, that's not very many kids. So I guess it just depends on your perspective. Sure, nine percent doesn't sound like a lot, but if next year you turn around and you've got to pay a nine percent increase in your uh, income tax, that'd, that'd be a lot. Or if you go to work tomorrow and your boss says, hey, we're going to need to cut your pay by 9%. All of a sudden, that's a lot, right? 9% can be a lot. So let's look at it in different terms. The National Center for Education Statistics puts the, the average class size of an American public elementary school at 21.2 students per class. Secondary schools are 26.8 students per class. So that means if, if you have a fourth grader, it's likely that he is at least two friends. If he's not one of them, there are at least two people in their class that have been approached with online sexual solicitation. And at least one of them has probably experienced a predator trying to make offline contact, trying to give them a phone call, trying to knock on their door. So in a, in a class of, of fourth graders all across the country, in a class of third graders, in a class of second graders, that's a lot of kids. If you have an eighth grader, she's, she's probably got three friends who've experienced it online and, and one or two that have, that have experienced it offline. That's a lot. So there is a risk, right? But it, it might seem low, but that, that risk is always searching for the next victim. It doesn't give up. I get it, but our kids are smart. We've trained them, we've talked to them. We know better, they know better. Oh, we've got cell phone monitoring. We know what they're doing. We're fine, they'll be all right. Oh, we've got a camera around our house. We know if there's somebody will walk up. Or we've got a fence or a gated community. Yeah, that'll keep them out. Oh, we live in a nice neighborhood. We're good. That, didn't, that sort of thing doesn't happen here. Mm -mm. It'll never happen to us. There are passive protective measures. Cameras on your house, cell phone monitoring, gated communities, using the wrong name online. You know, not, not fully identifying yourself online. Those are, those are great. They are, and they, they probably help. But that's all they do. They help. You can't, you can't rely on a, a passive protective measure. The intellect of a, of a worldly 40-year-old who is intent on fulfilling a, a sexual depravity through your 9-year-old, the 40-year-old will always win out. They have the world experience. They know what kids like. They remember what they liked as a kid. The kid doesn't know the level of evil that is out there. That's our job as parents to protect them from it and slowly introduce it to them, right? All right, so I'm about to show a clip. I'm going to enter a little disclaimer here. I don't know Glenn Beck. He doesn't know me. I don't. I'm, I'm not a, a regular listener of his shows, but I've, I've listened to his shows and I will listen to his shows. 100% confident that he has zero clue who I am and he has never seen anything that I've done. Um, you know, I'm, I'm neither endorsing him nor am I uh, condemning him. It's uh, I'm just I'm showing this clip for informational purposes. I'm not trying to make money off of, off of his clip or this video. The the rights and the property and all that good stuff, it belongs to him and to the blaze and I'm not trying to profit off of this clip. I need to understand that. Um, but when he offered this clip, he did include the share link. So I clicked the share. It's all his, okay? Uh, but he wanted to help people by putting this clip out there, by telling the story. And that's my intent is the same. I'm passing his information along to you. Um, so the link for the video is in the description.
social media, and please leave my family alone. The only reason why I am discussing this is I have been told by several authorities that this would be helpful to other people. So please leave my family alone. Something happened over the summer. Um, I took a vacation in uh, July because uh, something had uh, happened. And my family and I, we needed to go away together for a while. My wife woke me up about 12.20 in the morning. And she said, honey, the phone where I just rang, half a ring and it stopped. And I wanted to say, Thank you for the, thank you for the update. Now back to sleep. And she said, somebody picked it up. We have a phone in our house that has two or three lines. And it shows, you know, the incoming call, has caller ID, has the incoming call, and then it also has a line on it, that lights up if somebody picks it up, it lights up. That's so why I sat up in bed and I said, what do you mean somebody picked it up? And she said, somebody picked it up and I went up into the kids' room and they're both sound asleep. We have monitoring and uh, there is there is someone monitoring our house visually and audio 24-7. Uh, my family has been under attack. We have, we have had problems uh, in the past. So I take it very seriously. I said, is anybody on duty? And she said, no. And I said, well, okay, let's not panic. And so we sat there and we talked for a few minutes and uh, uh, we looked at the caller ID and I won't tell you where it's from, um, but it was from out of state. And uh, I said, we don't know anybody. That's, maybe it was a wrong number. She said, I swear to you, somebody picked it up. I'm thinking that somebody is outside in the guard shack or something and maybe picked up the phone in there and is, is communicating with somebody. The phone does not ring. The light just goes on. And somebody is making a call in my house. And we watch it for a while. And it's, it's going for three, four minutes. So I get the dogs and I um, give them the command to search and kill, uh, and I have them both by a leash, uh, and I have a gun. And I walk out of the bedroom, and I walk into the living room, and we have a very long hallway in our, in our house, and I was walking down that center hallway, and I'm in the living room, and I announce, if there is someone in the house, I have a gun, and I have dogs, I and my family feel under threat and I will shoot to kill. Um, please announce yourself. Nothing. I keep walking down the hall, repeating it. I have a gun and I will shoot to kill. My family and I feel as though we're under attack. Dogs are all keyed up as they can feel the tension in the house. And we hear something stop and I'm about to let the dogs go and I say if if there is someone in the house or if it is one of the children you need to identify yourself right now because I will shoot to kill I hear my son say dad it's me were you on the phone no were you on the phone why Answer the question, yes. Now, who is my son talking to? It's now 1.30. Who's my son talking to at 1.30? My son is 13. He said, I was just talking about a game from one of the gamers that I play with on PlayStation. I said, what's the name? And it was the name on the caller ID. I said, how old is he? He's in his 30s. My son's 13. I said, are you out of your mind? 
First of all, you gave him our phone number. You identified yourself. You're playing with a stranger. All of those things break the rules of the house. And he's like, it's nothing. And I said, he's in his 30s. You're 13. What does a 30-year-old have to? And he's like, it's nothing. And I said, let me ask you a question. If your sister, who's 11, was on the phone with a 30-year-old guy, would you be saying the same thing? No. Well, what the hell is wrong with you? I probably didn't ha handle it the right way, but I think I handled it the way any parent would at 2 o'clock in the morning. The police officers ask if they can uh, spend a few minutes with just Tanya and I, and I know what they're going to ask because I had just been told what happens uh, next, and that is they're going to ask for the PlayStation. They will ask for the PlayStation or the Xbox or whatever it is that you're using uh, because they have information that they'll need to get off of that, including every conversation that he has ever had and I said, well, I don't think he saves any of it. And uh, Tim said, that's not me. The child sex crimes unit is in my living room. We um, sit down with the police officer and uh, he asks, you know, what was going on? Who initiated the call? You know, what do you guys talk about? My son defends him and says, my mom and dad, uh, they always, they're paranoid. They always think that somebody's out to get us, everything else. <laughs> you know, in my case, um, <laughs> partly true, uh, but partly because, yes, they are. Um, and I was shocked at my son because he has witnessed it. And I thought my kids understood that because they've, they've witnessed very frightening things. I thought my kids would get it, but obviously they didn't. To cut to the, the chase here, because we had a phone with dual lines that lit up so you could see if someone was on the phone, because my children did not have access to the computer, because they did not have Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or anything else. Because we were lucky enough, I would not have looked at that light, my wife did, on the first attempt, he was caught. I'm not gonna give you any details other than the authorities were aware of him. Uh, there were uh, apparently 12 other children he was grooming. Uh, and that's all I can uh, say. Regardless of how you feel about this man's ideology, his political opinions, um, his delivery, his accumulation of wealth, or how he uses that wealth. Um, that, that's irrelevant here. The fact of the matter is, Glenn Beck is a dad. And he's a dad that revealed on his show that with the best security system that money can buy, in a well-protected home, with, with cautious and aware parents, it's not going to deter a predator who, who sinks his, his hook and he gets a bite. That's how grooming works. A, a predator will eventually get the child to lower the home defenses that the parents have installed and then once they get caught or, or found out or something along those lines, the, the kid, just by being embarrassed or, or through naivety, or, or they'll want to defend their own behavior by defending the predator. That's the way grooming works. They, they establish that trust so that the kid takes the predator's side over the parents. You know, adults, we recognize the danger. We, we try to protect our kids from it. it. They will typically see us as, as just these oppressive tyrants that, that they're just trying to keep me from having fun. I'm just trying to enjoy life. And that's why we, that's, that's 
that's part of the reason why we're doing what we're doing is to, to limit that that rebellion stage. We want to keep that relationship strong, or if or if you've lost it, to to reclaim it, because the world is trying to take it away. There comes a day in every kid's life where where he or she decides for the first time that this is it. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna rebel. I mean, I'm sure they don't tell their friends that I'm going to rebel for my parents. That's, I'm sure it doesn't happen that way. But they just decide, you know what? Man, my parents don't know what they're talking about. I'll be fine. And, you know, us as parents, we, we know it's coming. So we pray that, like, our daughters still go out and get the ice cream that they were planning to get after the football game. But the football game went into overtime, so yeah, curfew got broken. And, you know what? That's the sort of thing we hope for, right? It's just, it's just, you know, they just lost track of time. It's not the way for predators. Predators will patiently invest their time and effort and money in a lot of cases that with the intent of, of getting the, the kid to lower those defenses or the way that they're going to rebel is by opening the gate or the front door or the way that they're really going to rebel is by hopping on a plane using a ticket that somebody from the internet bought for them because they've never been to I don't know Green Bay Whatever they can do to get them away from their parents is what a predator is going to try. It's, you know, we see these stories all the time of predators getting into the minds of these kids. And it's scary. It makes us think, oh man, what am I ever going to do? And so then we revert back to the first option of, of just protecting them at all times. So it's this, this evil cycle of, of do we stifle their development or do, we, or do we put them at risk? And I'm, telling you, I'm here to tell you that there is another option. So yeah, we're going to take a moment, recap kind of where we've gone. Make sure to subscribe to our channel. Click the little bell to make sure that you get all of our newest videos. Um, so the content of this hopefully will prove to be important um, and for any parent who hasn't allowed their, their kid online before but is thinking about it, this is vital. It's vital that the parents understand so that they can then teach the kids. So stick around to the end of the episode. Make sure you do that. Uh, I'm going to show you a way to uh, uh, get mentioned on, on, a, on a future channel um, up to as many as 30 of our next videos or six months, whichever one's longer. So let's recap. We can't keep kids sheltered from all risk because we run the risk of having them not be prepared when it's time for them to move out. We have to recognize that there is a legitimate risk that we have to mitigate and, and we can't expect passive security measures to do the job for us. So, so what do we do? Again, I'm not an expert in this field. If you feel the need after watching this video or before it, but, and I didn't resolve, whatever, go seek counsel from an expert. If your kid is getting older, and, and not just teenage or preteen, but you know even even NJ's age, he's he's eight. So even as as, as kids start to, to grow and develop their own personalities, if you haven't established these sort of rules, then getting them in there is really tough, and and it may even seem impossible at times. Like oh man, I've already messed this kid up forever, but that's not true. With consistency and with love. It can improve the nature of that relationship forever. It's important that you remember those two things, consistency and love. So, okay, what do we do? You know, we've got to recognize that there is a risk. We can't ignore it. We also can't insulate the kids from all risk, but and we have to do more than just rely on the passive protective measures. So what do we do? We actively participate in the child's life. We talk to them about the things that matter to them. We might know that, oh, that's so little in the grand scheme of things, but it's a huge deal to them. You've experienced it 700 times. It's the first time they've experienced it. Talk to them about those things that are important to them, not to you. It's not about you anymore. It's all about how to get this kid ready to face the world. 
So talk to them about the things that are important to them. Learn about the things that are important to them. And given that the idea behind the channel that we started and the community that we started is by having them teach us, what better way to learn about the things that the kids like than to have them teach us about them. Give us their input, their perspective, why it's important to them. And in the process, you can insert those, uh, you know, morals, you know, just little bits at a time. When they talk about somebody being proud, you can talk about what it means to be humble. When you talk about the, when they talk about how much they wish they were rich, you get to talk about being rich in spirit, being actively involved, not just, oh man, that was a really cool thing that you just did. Talk to them about it. We involve ourselves in their lives and we offer love and kindness when it's warranted. Oh, oh, it's your kid. Love and kindness is always warranted. But, you know, I get it. I remember being 12, going on 30. Sometimes kids are just, they just seem unlovable. You know, I, I honestly, I don't know how my mom put up with me. Uh, you know, I was the youngest of, of three boys in the home. I was hyperactive. I was dramatic. I was spoiled. I, I get it. I know. I, I used to love starting fights with my big brothers because I would just, I'd wrestle them and I'd do my best to beat them, but they'd always end up beating me. They're, they're my big brothers. And then they would team up on me as they should have. <laughs> but then what do little brothers do whenever big brothers win a fight? Little brothers start crying. They call for mom. Big brothers get in trouble. Now I get the TV. <laughs> I mean, it's what I did. So our stepdad was involved. He was. But he worked hard. And he worked a lot. Our biological dad and our stepmom and our sister, they loved us. And, and we loved them. There was no ill will there at all. And, and there isn't still like it's a it's a great relationship that I that I have with them but they they lived you know and in, in, they lived in other parts of the country for the vast majority of of the time we were growing up you know our mom always had a full-time job she always took care of the house she would go with us she would go as a chaperone on field trips she packed lunches for and cooked dinner for three picky boys that none of them liked the same stuff um, you know, we all played different sports and, you know, hauling us to and from practices and games and whatever. And, and of course, you know, she wanted to live her own life. So she was superwoman. She's my hero. I told her that today. Um, you know, I don't know how she did it, but she was, she was my hero. She still is. Um, she had every reason to, to go in to her bedroom when she got home from work and just lock the door. Just, I don't feel like dealing with it today. <laughs> Can't do it. My mom never did that. She never went into her room and just locked the door and said, y'all fend for yourselves. She got involved. She got home, she was dog tired. She cooked dinner. Or she rushed home. You know, I can't tell you how many times I saw my mom pull up to the, to the baseball field in her work scrubs. Or, or come into the basketball game having just come from work and she was the loudest one in the stands. Not yelling at the umps like so many parents do now. She was embarrassing because she was saying, good job, good job, do it again, woohoo. I mean, sure we're embarrassed when we're kids, but as we grow up, how proud did it make us feel that our mom was there paying attention, talking to us about how we did in the game, referring to something that we did it's it's special when a parent is actively involved in their kids' lives. You know, I I only remember her losing her temper a few times, um, like just like overwhelmingly, it's like, huh? <laughs> it was scary, but it, I remember the times that she did, and and I remember <laughs> the things I did that led up to that, and. I deserve so much worse than what I got. You know, I got in trouble, I get it, and I got disciplined, 
and I would get mad at that. And I, mmm. Eventually, I always realized it's my fault I'm in trouble. It's not hers. And so eventually I would realize, you know, I deserve to get grounded or to get something taken away or or whatever or not get to do something that I really wanted to do. And and I never felt unloved. And I realize how blessed I am by that. I do. But at, at no point did I ever feel like getting in trouble was 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 a, a result of not being loved. You know, it was it was love was always there in our house. Um, it was hard for them, for my parents at times. I'm sure. If your kid sees you love them, if they see that you are truly interested in what they like, then they will invite you into their lives. You don't have to force your way in anymore because they want you around. It's the same with me and NJ right now doing doing these videos. He comes, or I come home, or, or we're spending time together on a Saturday, where, and we're talking about the next video that we're going to do. We're taking notes, or we're writing ideas down. How cool is that? And he'll initiate it. Because it's, it's YouTube and it's Minecraft right now. It's, it's things that he really likes to do, and that's special because he is involving me in his life because he sees that I want to be a part of it. I'm not forcing my way in and I'm not forcing him to do something that he doesn't want to do. Now, I'm not talking chores and whatever. I'm talking about I want to watch the stars play hockey. I don't care. But if your kid knows that you love them, even through discipline, even when they're in trouble, if, if you express the love that a parent should have for their kid, then, then they're going to reach out to you. You'll be the person they come to, even when they're in, even when they've backed themselves into a corner, even when they've done something that they know they shouldn't have done. They're going to reach out to you because they know that even if you, even if they're in trouble, you'll do it with love. And what's better than that? Is there anything better than knowing that I am loved? So, okay, we've got to be honest with ourselves. It, whether we shower our kids with love or not, the, the risk of a predator is always there, right? I mean, I, I know, I'm sure there have been, I'm sure there have been victims of, of child predators that came from loving homes, that received the acclaim and the recognition for, for a job well done. They've, they, were, they felt truly valued. I get it. And I'm not claiming that the things that I'm talking about here will remove all risk. Because as long as there's a predator out there, there is a risk. So we're not talking about eliminating all risk. The risk is going to be there. We're just talking about mitigating that risk. Removing as much of it as we can. There's risk driving to work every day. I, at, at, at this point right now in my life, I commute an hour and a half to work every day. I see a wreck on the road probably four out of five days between where I live and Dallas. It, there's risk on the road. It doesn't keep us off the road. So we do things to mitigate that risk. We drive the speed limit. We wear our seat belts. Our cars now have all sorts of safety features. We mitigate the risk of death while we're driving, but we still drive. So that's what this is about. This is about mitigating the risk of exposing your children to online sexual predators. So by, by involving yourself and getting them to invite you into their lives, that gives you the opportunity to see what they do. So if they play online with you know some 40-year-old dude regularly, and then all of a sudden your kid invites you and they pop up, the guy on the other end doesn't know you're there. He pops up and he starts typing and writing or talking if they've got the little microphone headset things. That gives you the opportunity to, hey, who's that? You get to say, oh, that's, that's this guy in Minnesota or Wisconsin. And, 
Oh, well, why are you talking to him? Oh, he's just a guy I play with. So then you watch that guy a little closer. See what he's doing. If if you're actively involved, then your your kid will answer your questions. Because they want to answer your questions. They want you to have questions. So encouraging families to reconnect is is why we launched at Dad Can Learn. You know, why we made it a, a why we're aiming to make it a bigger platform. Um, you know, as I was as we were were kind of figuring out where it can go, what would the purpose would be. Um, that's we 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 realize that I'm not the only one out there that works too much. So many of us don't know what to do anymore, though. Like, how do we how do we do what they like to do when I don't understand what they like to do? They, you know, that's that's why we do it. We want to show how it can be done. We don't want to necessarily show you the way to do it because what my kid likes is not necessarily what your kid likes I just want to show you that it can be done yeah, and you know, so whether that's not getting to watch the the football game so that you can go have them tell you all about minecraft and and unspeakable and preston plays and you know what's wrong with what's wrong with that or you know my stepdad i, I said earlier that he was involved hey i don't know that he ever played a day of baseball in his life well, he stopped working on his cars and, and he would you know, knock off work earlier or, or whatever he had to do to come be our baseball coach. I don't, I don't, baseball doesn't necessarily interest him, but he, he got involved. That, that's the example, right? Maybe instead of going up into your room at, you know, on a Saturday and, and binge watching Sons of Anarchy for the fifth time, maybe you watch Frozen for the 505th time. Yeah, I can't tell you what to do. But there's things out there that interest our kids that we don't have interest in. But by getting involved in what they want to do, by actively participating in the things that interest them, is how we empower them. It's how we connect with them so that they will no longer want to seek the, the, the affirmation from someone they don't know over the recognition from you. So that's it, folks. That the best way to protect your kids from child predators is by being actively involved in the things that they like to do, not the things that we want them to like to do, but the things that they develop interest in on their own. Thanks for coming along on the journey. You know, I'm just a guy intent on, on loving my son in the best way that I know how. I want every parent, I truly want every single parent to be able to maintain or reclaim the relationship that the world tries to break apart. You know, I've, I've made a few disclaimers about not being an expert and not being a psychologist and whatever. If there is an expert out there that gets a hold of this video and you disagree, talk to me about it. Let me know how I'm wrong. Let me know what it is that that I've said that's incorrect because I don't want to put information out there that's not correct, especially regarding this subject. I said earlier that two kids in a class being is sexually approached online is too many. One kid in an entire school is too many. One kid in an entire school district is too many. One kid being subjected to an online predator is too many. You know, I don't, I don't know what we do to rid the world of online sexual predators. I don't, I never will. But maybe through active participation in our kids' lives, we can still raise them up to be solid contributors to society 
by, be, by having them be prepared for the real world. But at the same time, we get to protect them, protect our kids from those predators. And at the same time, you're maintaining or reclaiming that relationship. So what's better than that? You know, you, you safely and successfully turn a little mini me, a little, a little kid into an adult. I mean, that doesn't get any better. And throughout the whole time, they love you. I mean, that's, that's what the whole world is about, is love, right? I mean, every, every major religion in the world is centered on love. You know, full disclosure, we're Christians, and the whole point of our, of our faith is the love that God had for His creation. Without love, nothing else matters. The charitable love. The love that gives of yourself in order to fulfill someone else. So as we're wrapping up here, make sure to go down into the comments or the description down below in order to um, subscribe. Make sure you click the little bell so that you will get notifications when we put new videos up. Some videos may be like this if there's an important topic that, that NJ doesn't really need to be a part of or, or most of our videos are going to be of him teaching me about the things that he loves to do. We're trying to, uh, to, to make more appealing videos as our, as our new mission statement says, which is also in our, our channel description in the uh, about section. All right, so I asked you earlier to stick around until the end of the episode to, uh, to find out how you can get your organization, your business, um, the social media handles, your name, um, all mentioned on a, on a future episode of, of, a dad can, of an at dad can learn uh, video. All you've got to do in the description below is the link to our Kickstarter page. There are rewards there if you decide to back us um, that will allow you to get mentioned um, you know, one time all the way up to 30 times or, or six months, whichever one is longer, whichever it takes us longer to accomplish. Um, you know, if we get 30 videos done in the next two months, then I'm still going to make those mentions, put you in the, in the uh, description of the video. That's, but that is only, uh, running until December 7th of 2019. So if you're watching this anytime after December 7th, 2019, I'm probably not going to come back in and edit this video out. And, and for those who subscribe to the YouTube channel, I will announce kind of some, some future mention opportunities especially as we grow and we will grow so as we do uh, we'll make opportunities available to you who have subscribed to get their their information mentioned so what we've also done is you know, our our goal on that kickstarter campaign is, is this little bitty you know it's it's 750 bucks um, to to increase our our appeal and our abilities get out high quality videos I'm not asking for the best of the best. I'm just asking for the right tools. But if you get there to our Kickstarter campaign before December 7th, 2019, and you see that we've reached our goal, woohoo, praise God. But also, everything over $750. For everything over $750, because we can't really set a limit. We can't say, oh, we got $750, can't back us anymore. Instead, what we've decided to do is to split all the excess three ways. So a third of it will stay here with us here at, at Deck and Learn. We'll use it as you know responsibly um, to maybe do better than I than I'm aiming to do in order to get the right equipment. So there's that. And then, but another third of it will go towards the Tanner Higgins Memorial Fund. Um, Tanner Higgins was a uh, sergeant in the U.S. Army, and uh, he was killed in action. And they they have established this this fund to assist military service members. And, uh, and their families, funds that go beyond what the government provides. The other third, the final third, will go towards Operation Valor. And essentially what they do, they promote awareness for uh, soldier-related issues, PTSD, traumatic brain injuries, things like that. Um, and then they also are a fundraising organization. And then they use whatever funds they can get, they distribute it to fully vetted veteran oriented or they make sure that the money goes to the right place splitting it three ways i think is, is 
the best way that we could think to use any excess funds. I appreciate you coming by. Subscribe, like, hit our Kickstarter if it's before December 7, 2019. If it's not, pay attention to our videos and we'll give you other opportunities. Go check us out on Twitter and Facebook. Those are both at Dad Can Learn. Check out our website, www.dadcanlearn. And until next time, I'm Dad, and I'm out. Hey, y'all. Thanks for stopping by the Dad Can Learn YouTube channel. Hopefully you like what you just saw. Hopefully you like it. We'll see what after you subscribe. So go ahead and do that for us. Give us a thumbs up on these videos. And also make sure you go check us out on our Facebook and our Twitter accounts. They're both at Dad Can Learn for some notifications and updates and things like that. We're trying to grow this community full of parents and kids that are trying to reclaim the relationship that the world has tried to steal away from them. Um, so we look forward to seeing it grow and we look forward to seeing you next time.